Hi, and welcome to Motormouth. I'm Osha K. Levy. Now, it's a brave new world in the motorcycle industry, and one need look no further than BMW's new C Evolution scooter for ample proof of that. Borrowing three lithium ion battery modules from its i3 electric car, BMW has created the very first mass production electric maxi scooter available in the U.S. market. And I'm proud to say that I received the very first press C Evolution in the country on behalf of Motorcycle Consumer News Magazine to put it through its paces in a real world commuter scenario and to judge whether electrification is a verifiable option or just a passing fad. Let's dive deep into an overview because there's a lot of technology to cover here today. The C Evolution has a liquid cooled electric motor that punches out 48 horsepower and 53 pound feet of torque. For reference, that's 15% more torque than BMW's conventional gas-powered C650 scooter, and it's all available from 0 RPM up in a perfectly flat plateau to 4500 RPM, as you can see here. Let's contrast this with the torque curve from the conventional C650 gas motor, which has to rev all the way to 6000 RPM to hit its lower peak torque figure, and you start to get an understanding of how much quicker the C Evo feels off the line. The electric motor is enclosed within the swing arm assembly to the rear of the battery casing. A tooth belt handles secondary drive, connecting the motor to the rear belt pulley on the output shaft. And a reverse mode is also available, allowing the scooter to be walked backwards, including uphill. Significantly, each time the rider lets off the throttle to decelerate, the e-motor builds up a drag torque and feeds that electrical energy back into the battery, thereby recovering what are 100% losses in conventional gas-powered vehicles. Used judiciously, this can increase the range by 10 to 20%. The rider can vary the effect of the drag torque from very mild to very aggressive by selecting from four separate drive modes. Road mode, which has full acceleration and regen set at 50% of maximum available, Sail mode, which has full acceleration available with near zero regen. Eco Pro mode, which has limited acceleration and maximum regen available for the highest range. And Dynamic mode, which is full acceleration and full regen. These modes are very helpful in balancing range and performance as required for each particular ride. And even with the regen partially limited in road mode, the C Evolution can come to nearly a full stop without applying the brakes at all. Once you get used to it, the C Evolution can be ridden with just the throttle alone, an extremely limited use of the mechanical brakes, thanks to this regen function. The C Evolution has 36 Samsung SDI lithium ion cells divided among three battery modules, each 100 to 150 volts DC, set at 133 volts DC nominal. Total capacity is 12 and a half kilowatt hours, and advertised range is up to 99 miles in Eco Pro mode. The battery is entirely air-cooled via ventilation shaft in the middle of the die-cast aluminum battery casing, which itself acts as a load-bearing chassis structure. A 3 kilowatt integrated charger lives on board, which allows charging from fully depleted in about 9 hours and 20 minutes using 120 volt utility power, or in 4.5 hours using 240 volt level 2 type chargers. A small charger, 12 amps, 120 volts, stored under the passenger seat when not in use, and the standard J1772 charging receptacle lives behind a panel near the rider's left knee, a convenient and accessible location. BMW's proven two-channel ABS is standard equipment here. 270 millimeter dual floating discs with two piston floating calipers handle stopping duty up front while the rear gets a single matching 270 millimeter disc and caliper. The brakes are strong with a slightly wooden feel, though again, one rarely ever uses the mechanical brakes anyway with the aggressive region setting on. The brakes automatically lock once the kickstand is placed in the down position for added safety. The rest of the chassis is modern and oriented towards urban duty. A tubular steel frame holds the traction battery down low for better balance with 40 millimeter upside down fork suspension up front and a direct link spring strut out back soaking up the bumps. Suspension travel is a generous 4.7 inches on the front and 4.5 inches in the rear, while the rear shock has seven manually adjustable settings for fine tuning. 
Five-spoke light alloy diode cast 15-inch wheels are shod with meaty Metzler tires. And the unladen road-ready weight of the C-Evolution is 606 pounds, about 31 pounds more than BMW's convention C650 scooter. Seat height is 30.1 inches with the standard seat, or 30.9 inches with the optional comfort seat our test model was equipped with. The C Evolution 7.25 inch wide by 3 inch high TFT display contains a wealth of information in addition to the usual speedometer, odometer, trip computer, and myriad of warning lights. A graphical interface displays the battery state of charge and whether the energy is being expended from the battery or fed back into it via regen, while an expert menu lets the rider toggle between time, date, average speed, average energy consumption, current energy consumption, overall energy consumption, energy recovery, bonus range via regen, high voltage power, vehicle voltage power, and much more. Despite the multitude of choices, it really isn't difficult to navigate and customize this display. The C-Evolution is a handsome machine by scooter standards with a clear family tie to BMW's other C-Series models. It's currently only available in this ionic silver metallic with electric green and black storm metallic accents. Starting the machine is fairly conventional. You just twist the key, hold the brake, and thumb the starter button. Of course, there's no starter here per se, but the crisp TFT screen lights up with a ready signal. And from there, just twist the throttle and go. A high-pitched whine at low speeds quickly disappears as the speed ramps up, and a wave of instantaneous torque whooshes you forward effortlessly. This, above all else, is the great surprise when riding electric. There's no waiting for the engine to rev or for power to build or for clutches to engage. The e-motor's maximum torque is available instantly from 0 RPM onward. All you hear is wind noise getting progressively louder as you approach top speed, with no vibration whatsoever. And if you think that loud pipes save lives, you ought to experience the heightened awareness of really hearing the traffic all around you, including those coming up from the rear. It's truly a revelation. Acceleration is pretty good for a scooter. 0 to 30 can be achieved in about 2.8 seconds and 0 to 60 in about 6.5. Traction control is standard and top speed is electronically limited to 80 miles an hour. I'm going to slow down here using only regen. Notice how the graph shows all the power going back into the battery. And it slows down pretty quickly as you can see with no brakes at all. It can actually come to a full stop. Seating position is neutral and there's a commanding view of surrounding traffic thanks to the floating mirror pods which have LED turn signals integrated into their housings. The floorboards are roomy and the comfort seat is supportive if a bit too squishy for my tastes. Dual mode heated grips were toasty on cold mornings, and switchgear ergonomics are typically logical BMW, but a review of the manual is definitely in order if you intend to decipher the Teutonic hieroglyphics in the TFT's expert menu. Handling is sharp and precise, with the low center of gravity making slow speed maneuvers a breeze. Zipping around the city is as fun as it gets, since the CEVO's acceleration off the line is brisk enough to leave almost everyone well behind. The rush of torque off the line is very visceral, despite the complete lack of noise, vibration, and harshness. Likewise, highway duty is comfortable enough with a compliant ride and decent wind protection from the fixed position standard windshield. A larger touring windshield is optional, though it wasn't available in time for this test. There's enough storage under the passenger seat to swallow one full-face helmet, assuming the 120-volt charger is removed, and also a small lockable glove box up front by the rider's right knee as well. The most common question I was asked by curious riders over the course of this test was about running out of juice. Ironically, this concern is wholly misplaced since electric vehicles provide much more warning than gas vehicles do when running out of energy. In the case of the Sea Evolution, an amber warning light illuminated when 20% of the battery's capacity remained. The battery state of charge graph turned from green to orange when 15% remained, then to red when 5% remained, and then to blinking red when 3% remained. 
Soon afterwards, the indicated miles remaining to empty read zero, but the scooter soldiered on anyway, with reduced acceleration displayed as red bars at the top of the e-power graphic on the TFT. This continued on for another 3.2 miles, when propulsion grew noticeably weaker. The C Evo crept forward now at about 30 miles an hour, gradually getting slower and slower, until finally coming to a gentle halt a full 3.7 miles after showing zero miles remaining. Had I been gentler with the throttle, there's no doubt I could have stretched this to a full five miles. Contrast this with a typical gas scooter, which flashes a low fuel warning light when one gallon remains in the tank and then abruptly dies as soon as the gas is consumed. Now life with the sea evolution can be summed up in one word, and that's efficiency. Not a single scintilla of energy is wasted. In the city, riding assertively, I coaxed an average of 9.8 miles per kilowatt hour out of it. Notably, I got over 11 miles per kilowatt hour if I babied it, and in a worst case test run, where I held the throttle completely open for 46 miles continuously, it still returned an astonishing 4.9 miles per kilowatt hour. And that's during the relatively cool month of October. It only gets better as things warm up. So coupled with a near absence of any maintenance requirements, there's no tune-ups required here ever, it soon became clear that the Sea Evolution is a seriously parsimonious vehicle to run. So using figures recorded from my three-week test regimen and information I gathered from C650 owners online as a baseline of sorts, here's how the numbers break down over a hypothetical 12,000 mile one-year riding season. The Sea Evo averaged 7.7 .7 miles per kilowatt hour in a 50-50 city highway mix. Using $0.09 cents per kilowatt hour as my rate, which is rather on the high side for New Jersey, that works out to about $140 for 12,000 miles of travel. We're going to do apples to apples here on maintenance, so the CEVO's maintenance costs using BMW's factory recommended hourlies at $100 per hour northeast average are $350 over a one-year 12,000 mile riding season. That works out to about $490 total to run this thing for a full year and 12,000 miles. And by the way, that maintenance cost figure is artificially high for the first year, since year one includes a running in check at 600 miles, which only has to be performed once, and a brake fluid flush, which is performed at the end of year one and every two years thereafter. Therefore, year two operating costs should be significantly lower than year one for the C Evolution. If we contrast this to a conventional BMW C650 scooter, I calculated an average of 51.3 miles per gallon in a 50-50 city highway mix. Using $2.85 average for premium gas here in New Jersey as of October 2017, that works out to $666 in gas for 12,000 miles. And here's the kicker. Its maintenance costs using BMW's factory recommended hourlies at $100 per hour northeast average are $1,320 over a one-year 12,000 mile riding season and that works out to $1,987 to run the gas scooter for a full year or 12,000 miles. So yeah, the gas scooter costs about four times per mile what this electric scooter costs to run. And take a look at this, full charge from empty. I rode 84 miles on this day and ran the battery down to about 2%, and it cost me $1.13 to refill it. $1.13 to travel 84 miles. How far would $1.13 in gas take you? That's the math. So commuters, take notice. Now overall, this is a mighty first volley by BMW to kickstart this important segment, and the product itself is solid. However, with a few improvements, it would be even more compelling. First of all, there is no connectivity here. As we go to press, the C Evolution does not have BMW's existing connected drive suite, meaning that the rider cannot monitor the scooter's state of charge remotely. Now, as a general rule, electric vehicle owners crave connectivity, checking on their charging status and even comparing efficiencies over social media using common apps. BMW already has the connected drive app for its electric cars, and the C Evolution surely deserves such remote services and mobile phone integration as well. Second, there's no power port. The C Evo has an 8 ampere hour 12 volt battery on board already to run the common 12 volt gauges and other electronics, yet, there's no power port, which could be used for phone charging or GPS, etc. One can, of course, run a power cable to the battery, but a power port and a convenient location is a much more elegant solution, and it's readily available right from BMW's own parts bin. 
Third, there's no cruise control option. BMW, please offer cruise control as an extra cost option on the scooter. I would gladly pay for it given the force discipline it provides on the highway to avoid speeding and thus reducing range. Finally, there's no brake light decelerometer. Now, every manufacturer of electric vehicles should follow Tesla's lead and offer brake lights which actuate based on the rate of deceleration and not just when the brakes are actually applied. The regen mode on the C-Evo can be every bit as aggressive as a downshift at high RPM on a conventional bike, and having the brake light blip would be a great safety feature. Such proven and inexpensive hardware is readily available from Clearwater and Admore and Skeen and other vendors, and it would be an excellent safety feature, so we strongly recommend installing such a brake light until the factory starts offering it as standard equipment. The Sea Evolution scooter is available for sale now in California with an MSRP of $13,750 plus any options and BMW is going to gauge demand there and decide if and when to roll it out nationally. Here's what I think. Overall, it's patently obvious that electrification is no passing fad. The efficiency gains are incredible, dramatically reducing the operational cost per mile, which is a windfall for commuters like me. The absence of noise and vibration and harshness is a boon and arguably a safety benefit too, since now one can hear much more of this nearby surrounding traffic approaching. And likewise, the wave of instantaneous torque from zero RPM must be felt to be believed and is addictive in its own right. So for commuters and urbanites and others whose lifestyles can fit around an electric vehicle with this type of range, this is no fad. This is the future. Until next time, keep the shiny side up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more of your favorite Moto Gear reviews.